Hi there, Spark fans, Rob Reynolds here. If you're a D&D player, then you probably listen to, or are at least familiar with, Critical Role. Led by veteran game master Matthew Mercer, Critical Role brings together professional voice actors who also happen to be nerdy gamers, who share their campaigns on their podcasts and YouTube videos. Well, today they're starting a new campaign, and apparently tis the season. I'm seeing a lot of people starting new campaigns right now, and it got me thinking about D&D and how I've watched it evolve over the years. When I was in high school, Dungeons & Dragons was reserved for the very few super high-level fantasy RPG folks, or what Jackie Cation would refer to as inhabitants of the Dork Forest. Well, I continued to watch as it gained momentum and popularity, and custom dice started coming out, some really cool stuff. Places like Summit Dice here in Colorado are blurring the lines now between dice and art. Incredibly beautiful and fully functional. Eventually, a few companies started promoting the idea of adding physical representations to your campaign in the form of game pieces, mostly because they were manufacturing those game pieces. However, with the increased accessibility to 3D printers at home, at school, at makerspaces, adding physical components now to your campaign is becoming more commonplace. Some incredible designers like Devin Jones's Open Forge collection, Dutch Mogul, and William Chamberlain, aka Valandar, have uploaded some amazing designs that can be downloaded, painted, or even not painted, and added to your campaign to really bring a unified sense of the world to all the players in your campaign. So as Chris and I were talking here, we started considering what the next logical step might be for D&D players, and of course, being who we are and working where we do, we thought the next logical step was to try to bring these pieces to life. Now, some of them already incorporate an LED, but I wanted to go further than that. I wanted to add a little magic. And I thought the best way to do that would be with a reed switch and some magnets. Now, a reed switch is simply a pair of metal contacts in a housing that at rest don't touch, but when brought near a magnet, make contact completing the circuit. Now by adding one of those into your tile and putting a small magnet in the player character, you don't have to switch anything on when a player arrives there. Simply take the player character, place it on, and voila, magic. We offer a couple of different reed switches here at SparkFun, one in a glass casing and one in a plastic housing. I use the glass ones because they're slightly smaller, but if you do that, be careful, they are brittle. I found out that I had to encase it in hot glue in the structure itself before I was able to actually work with it without having it shatter. So as you can see, it's a really simple circuit. I've got a battery holder, I've got a reed switch, I've got an LED. It's really all there is to it. I've also added a resistor, but we do carry some LEDs with a built-in resistor. Now, while that might simplify the build, it would also limit your color choices. Of course, you could just forego the resistor like you would on an LED throw. It's not best practice, but it is possible. There are a few options for battery holders. Uh, for designs like this torch wall, it was designed to hold a 2032 coin cell battery. Now, for these other two tiles, I tried a couple of different things from our catalog. I looked at our standard 20 millimeter battery holder, and a lily pad battery holder. A lily pad has a larger footprint, but the standard one is much deeper than I thought I had room for, so I went with a lily pad design. Honestly, moving forward, I'll probably try out our sewable coin cell holder, as I believe that has a smaller footprint than the lily pad and a lower profile than the standard holder. Well, build and learn. Since I wanted to incorporate more than just a simple on-off light in these, I tried a couple of different things again. Uh, for the torch wall and the barrel, I went with a flickering LED to make it look like it was a flame. Now, of course, we don't carry flickering LEDs here, but I just went to the dollar store and got a couple of LED votive candles, and those have a flickering LED in them. I pulled those out and put them into these. If you're in the UK, Poundland probably has uh, similar candles for a pound. If you're in the rest of the world, I'm sure you've got a cheap store where you can find simple flickering candle lights like that and just tear them apart. Now for the other wall, I went with our slow cycle color changing LED. Now you probably won't be able to see it under the studio lighting, but I promise you the shadow that this cast against the back wall is so cool. And in normal gaming light, like in your home, it's gonna really be a cool addition. The designs I use set these tiles up off the ground a little bit, and they're designed that way so that you can combine multiple tiles using either the dragon lock, open lock, or infinity lock systems. And this is also great for us because it gives us a little bit of room underneath to add our components. Of course, you'll need to change the files a little bit to add things, and I tried this two different ways. I imported it into my 3D modeling software, uh, but these are super high poly models, so depending on what your system is running, that could take a while to manipulate them that way. The other way is just 
brute strength and ignorance, really. I used a Dremel, a drill, an X-Acto knife, gouge some holes, really whatever works for you, whatever gets the job done to make these as you need them. Now, moving forward, I want to see what else I can add besides just LEDs. I'm thinking maybe some Flexanol or, you know, muscle wire, but I don't think that I can get enough current to actually get them to do anything. I may also add a small motor. I know I've got a couple of tiny, tiny motors, three volt, I believe from old pagers. But I don't know how long that's gonna last in one of these, you know, running a motor off of a coin cell battery, no matter how small. Uh, I might be able to do a 555 timer to either do blinking lights or possibly make the uh, motor intermittent, but we'll see. Anyway, that's what I'm up to here. Uh, if you're inspired by this, I would love to see what you're doing. Uh, post it on socials, tag us, and until then, happy gaming and happy hacking. Hi there, Spark fans. Rob Reynolds here. Whoops, I'm looking well above the camera. Beneath to add our components. Yeah, fully functional, really cool stuff. Wait, I said that last time, so let's cut that out. Critical role, what about critical role? My eyes may go blank and wander off a bit, but I'll try and stay focused and I'll try and get to the end.